Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line. Robert That's Smith. That's right. Ch- Robert Smith, the chairman of uh, Vista Equity Partners, the richest black man in America. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good to see you all. How are you all today? Man, blessed, black, and highly favored, man. And I'm happy that you calling. He's calling us this morning for two things. Uh, one, because we all know small businesses need relief right now and restaurants mm-hmm. need relief right now. And the good brother Robert Smith has created a way to help with both. Where, where do you want to start, brother? Well, I think, uh, I think most importantly, it, we, we all have to realize that uh, we are in this together. You know, the, the coronavirus has created a, a massive uh, economic disruption. And it is hitting the small and medium businesses particularly hard. Uh, with my business, I'm in the software business. We have about 1.4 million uh, small to medium businesses as customers uh, across our portfolio. And uh, as we have enabled uh, work to to enable them to a understand what's going on and b you know give give some solutions that can be helpful to them, it's also become very apparent uh, that the black and brown communities uh, aren't gaining access to, or at least understanding how to access these PPP programs. And so what I've done is I've actually challenged a number of my teams to think about what are creative solutions that we can develop as software providers uh, to enable these businesses uh, to either remain in business or access some of the stimulus. You know, as you and I chatted, uh, Charlemagne, recently, you know, this is probably going to be one of the largest distributions of capital uh, into the American economy by the American government in our lifetimes. And, you know, the systems that they are, are using are, you know, established systems on the one hand, and they're starting to look at some, some newer fintech solutions, but it's quite confusing and it's evolving and it's dynamic. And when I've had a chance to talk with, you know, friends and family members who are also trying to navigate it, it, it has become confusing. And so what we've looked to do is provide a couple of, of solutions uh, to, to these communities uh, to be helpful. I think one of the most important things to do if you're a small business is first go to, to your existing uh, relationship, you know, the, the bank that you have, the depository relationship, and find out if they actually are uh, underwriting these SBA loans. If they are, you need to prepare the application properly. And from what we're seeing today over the last, you know, 19 days, it's about 75% of the applications that are being prepared aren't being prepared properly. And what happens is, of course, if you don't prepare properly, it gets stuck in the ether a little bit. And, it becomes even more difficult for them to A, to underwrite it, B, submit it, and for you to get what's called this, you know, this PLP, which is your, 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 your the, the specific number that the SBA assigns to your loan in the bank. And then you end up with a fair amount of frustration. And that's, that's just a challenging place to be. So first thing to do is you have to go to the bank, your existing bank. Are they underwriters? If they are underwriters, we actually have written, there's a number of people now are doing this, which is great. Uh, one of our applications uh, written by one of our companies called QuickBase, which actually is a loan accelerator. It helps you prepare your documentation properly. Um, and then you take that to your bank and now you have a prepared application. So that's kind of point one that, that we, we want to be helpful. And there's other folks who are doing this. So I don't want to say that we're the only ones, but there are other folks who are doing that that can be very helpful in these small and medium businesses preparing these applications. The second thing is if your bank actually isn't underwriting these loans you now have to find a bank that's underwriting these loans and you know to date there are only a few who are taking now what i call new depository accounts so if your bank doesn't do it you know we now there's a, a whole group of community banks that are out there cdfis which are looking to get capital but not all of them are necessarily taking new new accounts and so part of what I've asked my team to do was to be helpful and we're working with, you know, uh, Reverend Sharpton and his group, uh, National a- Action Network, to say, okay, let's identify the banks that are taking new depository accounts and try to drive a number of our community uh, customers to those banks to help them prepare those, their, their application packages and get them, get them submitted. So there's a, there's a whole, and it's evolving, of course, and I heard over this weekend, it looks like there may get to some of the fintech, you know, the PayPal's and the cabbages and those sort of folks may be able to get enabled so that if they have a relationship with these small to medium businesses, they might be enabled, but that hasn't completed yet. So it's an evolving landscape, but what we're focused on is bringing tools to the community 
to prepare their documentation so they can go to their existing bank or in some cases try to help them find new banks uh, that will take them on as new, new, new depositories. So that's kind of the big category around small to medium businesses and enable them to access this PPP dollars. So that's kind of the first it's, point. And they should go to quickbase.com if you're a small business. Right, and it's a PPP accelerator. So that's, that's a, a good way for you to get started. And it's, it's like all things, it's important that you get those applications uh, filled out properly, ensure that you, you know, you're, it's, 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 a, it's a, uh, a wizard in essence and an app that you can use. But if you've got questions around it, there's a couple other institutions out there who can actually help you with those questions. I was just on the phone with the CEO of, of one of those, it's called Fundera. And they actually are very helpful in preparing these applications. They have two banks that they work with that are actually taking new depositors um, and in that context, we're trying to try to get them 10 or 15 or 20 more. Uh, but at least in this case, they've got two, two banks that are taking new depositors. So if your bank doesn't, you know, underwrite these SBA loans and you don't have another bank, you've got to prepare your documentation and then find a new bank. And here's a place that has two banks, at least that, that have access and who are taking on new customers. I don't know how many new customers will take on, but at least there are some awesome options starting to open up and we'll continue to keep you all informed as we expand the pool and universe and understanding of who's taking on these new customers uh, to, to underwrite these loans. Now, Robert Smith, we're talking to Robert Smith. You know, we didn't ask, how are you holding up? How are you doing with this, this COVID-19 and coronavirus as far as your, your family? And, and what about some of your employees? How is business now? Yeah, th thanks for asking. My family, we're, we're, we're all kind of safe and self-isolating and, and, and doing well. And, you know, like, like a number of folks in our community, a number of my family members have, you know, high blood pressure, they have, they have uh, diabetes, and we're seeing the disproportionate impact it's having uh, in communities like ours that have those sort of, those sort of uh, pre-existing conditions. So, you know, like all things, we are, we are, we are gathering as a family, you know, in, 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 on, on, on various, you know, uh, networks like Zoom and, and WebEx, et cetera, uh, throughout the weekend, and typically, you know, throughout the week to just check in and you know, the good news is I think we're FaceTiming more as well just right. to find out how folks are doing who, who, who are uh, in our family uh, to ensure that everybody's kind of progressing. And, I, and thank you for asking that. You know, our business is a software business. We have about less than 30% exposure to the small to medium business channels. But all that said, every, every supply line, every business is getting affected. Um, one of the areas, the second one I wanted to, wanted to talk about is, you know, these restaurants. You know, I grew up in a in a, a predominantly black neighborhood with small restaurants that supported our community. And as many as you know, you know, most small businesses don't have more than two months of working capital. And JP mm -hmm. Morgan actually put out a report last year and showed that most in, in the black and brown community have less than, you know, two weeks of working capital. So when you shut these restaurants down, for instance, and those often are some of the, 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 the more vibrant businesses in, in our communities, um, they often don't come back. And so what I, we have a company, uh, one of ours too, actually Upserve and Gather, but Upserve is taking the lead on this, that in essence, they built an application that's an online ordering system, OLO system, that we're offering free. And we're offering it free to any restaurant uh, who says, okay, listen, I don't want to necessarily shut down, but I want to do online, or create an online ordering. And now we're getting reports back that certain of our customers uh, are now getting 30 plus percent of their revenue Okay, and about 10% of their cost basis because now you just have a couple of chefs and you have you know people doing curbside to pick up uh, and, and take out as opposed to using those delivery services that are taking 20 and 30% of your profits to go deliver your food. So we've got a, been getting a great pickup in that market, but that is one that I, and when I was talking to Charlemagne and some other friends over the, over the weekend, I said, let's make sure that every one of the restaurants in our community access this. I mean, it's a software program if you're an existing customer, we literally can get you up and running in an hour. If, if you are a new customer, sometimes it takes a day, depending upon the banking infrastructure and the point of sale infrastructure that you currently have. But if you've got a smartphone, we can get you enabled, get your menu up and running, and you, now you can stay in business. Because as you know, if you shut down the business, you stop the delivery of the food and the, you know, the grocery items and all those sort of things, and, and you lose your workers, you're, you're done. And it takes you months to, to come back, if at all. So we want to keep these businesses running as best they can during this time of social isolation. And so at some point, 
uh, you know, when this, when this all recedes and we've, and we've gotten therapeutic solutions worked out and, and vaccines uh, uh, available to folks, uh, those businesses don't just go into the ether, but can actually remain vibrant parts of our, of our community. So we're really focused on that. So that's our company, Upserve. And you just need to go online, any restaurant, go online, upserve.com and download the app and get with our folks and you can literally, you know, get into a takeout and curbside delivery business immediately. Uh, so I've been hearing a lot of people saying, hold on to your cash right now. If you have cash, hold on to it. For people who do have maybe a little savings that they've been waiting to do something with, is this a good time to invest when it comes to the stock market, real estate? Would you say for those people, that small percentage of people who might have a little extra, is this time to hold on to your cash or is it a good idea to invest? You know, they, I, I always think about, you know, in our economy, you know, utilizing your cash to, to get capital positions is, is an important thing to do. And you have to look at what are going to be resilient industries. Uh, what are the industries that are going to come back first? What are the ones that are going to come back later? Um, you know, obviously the consumer market, the consumer trafficked businesses, you know, we own a business that has 68,000 gyms and a number of those gyms are closed down. So we're creating you know, effective ways to try to keep them as customers, keep them business. So when, you know, social dynamics come back, they can, they can uh, get back in business. So I would, you know, again, occur, encourage uh, investors and folks to think about, you know, again, I wouldn't necessarily use cash for, for, you know, uh, discretionary income or discretionary events, but use it to invest in capital, look for businesses, look for things in your community that will come back, that will support uh, growth and frankly, you can get a return on, on those investments. So that's the way I think about, you know, capital, you know, some businesses are going to be much more resilient business to business, enterprise businesses, some consumer based businesses, it's going to take a while for those to come back. So just be very thoughtful about it. The, one of the best markets I think to be in is frankly is the, what we call the debt market or the bond market, uh, because ultimately those will come back and you've seen the fed and others come and actually put supporting, uh, 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 call it capital and supporting uh, our, our debt, our debt business. And, you know, those are things that are industry. And I think that's, that's an area that, that, you know, if you can, if you can get into that area uh, as an investor, that's a place to actually, you know, you can find some, some really interesting uh, investment opportunities there. All right. Robert, I want to ask you about quick base and upserve again, because, um, you know, there's a concern that the relief measures that let's say Congress is coming up with won't actually make it to black owned businesses. What steps are you making to ensure that what you're doing with Upserve and QuickBase is gonna make it to black owned businesses? Yeah, Upserve is, is it again, it is it just enables businesses to stay in businesses, these restaurants to stay in business. And to me, you know, if all of a sudden you go to zero revenues because you can no longer take customers in your restaurant, but you've got chefs and you've got the ability to actually have people come to your door and do takeout, you should do that. Uh, you should do it, of course, in a responsible way so that you're maintaining all the social distancing practices. But, you know, what I've seen and what I've been hearing is any business, that's, any of those restaurants that are staying in business that have takeout, the lines are around the corner because people are, are looking for, you know, mm -hmm. looking for food, and, you know, supplies in that, in that context uh, to, so for their families. As it relates to the, the, the overall banking piece of it, I own a business, we own a business called Finastra, which actually is third largest fintech company. And what they have and, and what we've built is a product called uh, Laser Pro. We have now have enabled uh, 500 community uh, banks and credit unions to now process these SBA loans with this app. And now I think 350 or so have already downloaded it. So these are, you know, large banks. So what we're focused on is making sure that the banking community has access to, you know, PPP and as it starts to, as, as it starts to evolve. And then part of what we've been talking with, with you know, Reverend Al Sharpton and others is, okay, let's make sure the community knows how to gain access to this capital. The banking industry today is how that capital is getting just redistributed to distributed to these small to medium businesses. You have to have an enablement dynamic to get there. And what we're focused on is ensuring that that enabling, enabling uh, dynamic is, is, uh, exists through our company, Finastra, and through Upserve, Upserve, or sorry, and through QuickBase. QuickBase, that team has built out a system so they can actually prepare your documents properly and go to the banks. Finastra actually provides the infrastructure for uh, a number of those banks. And now we're looking at, we've gone and said, look, any African-American-owned bank, we will give you that, that, you know, install that system for you. And it's, you know, in, in essence, free. 
so that they can now enable to do it. Now, the banks have the discretion as to whether they want to take you as a customer, but we want to at least enable them to be able to on-ramp your application into the SBA uh, eTrans system. And that's what we're focused on, is making sure the on-ramps are existing, the on-ramps are durable and they're reliable. And then we've got to get you know folks like you to actually get our community to go gain access to this capital. Now you don't you don't do much press, uh, Robert. So why is why is this so important that you decided to come out and and, and announce QuickBase and upserve yourself? Well, I mean, it, it it is clear over the last few weeks. You know, we we are truly in in um, in a, a, a dire situation uh, as it relates to these small and medium businesses. And ninety nine percent of African American and Latino owned businesses are small and medium, right? And and as I have conversations with friends, family members, customers, et cetera, it, it became very obvious to me that people are saying, this is a confusing dynamic. Of how do you gain access to this PPP to keep my business running, to keep my employees uh, on payroll, et cetera. And you know, because I'm in the tech business, I said, you know, one of the best things we can do is actually help enable people to on-ramp into those systems. So I challenged my team, and I just had an absolutely remarkable team uh, at Vista and our portfolio companies, who are spending their, 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 their spare time, their weekends going after uh, and trying to find the right solutions to help you know, communities that haven't had the, the capital advantages of other communities, and that's why it's important. And so as we start to come up with, with more of these solutions, we're gonna continue to feed them to you all because you, you, know, you have the connectivity uh, with these small to medium businesses every single day, and we wanna ensure that you have the best knowledge, information, uh, to help these businesses remain viable and, you know, frankly, viable parts of our community and, 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 and enhance their success, uh, success, success opportunities. So that's why it's important to me. And, you know, many of my friends own small to medium businesses and my fraternity brothers, small to medium businesses. And, you know, as we're getting on these Zoom calls and, and WebEx calls and everyone's just telling them, well, here's what's going on in Chicago, here's what's going on in Detroit, here's what's going on in San Francisco and L.A., it became very clear to me that you know, folks weren't really uh, feeling like they had access to the capital that could actually keep their businesses going, and, and frankly, you know, give them a chance to fight another day and survive into the next next opportunity of of, of growth in this country. Right. Well, I, I know you got to go, but I got to ask you a question: Are you strategically showing your guns off in the back to let people know uh, not to play with you, not to run up on you? I, 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 as I, as I, I, I'm at my ranch in Colorado, and I, as I even tell my cousins, you are welcome to visit, but make sure you don't come unannounced. <laughs> Dad, well, Robert Smith, thing, man. man. Communicating a great message, uh, keeping the communities informed, and, and again, if I can be helpful, we'll continue to come back with updates, because this is, as you know, ever evolving. I'm, I'm actually very happy with, with the fact that, you know, we're seeing some con continuing migration and folks actually focused on getting money specifically into our community uh, during this in this this during this time of Corona, and look, we will do all we can to enable uh, the businesses to gain access. All right. Well, now I want to thank you, Robert. Robert. Appreciate yeah, I want to I want to thank Robert for Quick Base for Upserve. I want to thank him for what he did to, for Morehouse College, and I want to thank him for what he did for the Breakfast Club when we did Change for Change last year, when we was raising money Absolutely. for the Thurgood Marshall College Foundation. You know, you gave a, a beautiful donation of a hundred grand. So thank you, Robert. We appreciate all you're doing for the community, and we're gonna have your back because you always got ours. All right. Thank you. All the best. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Take care. Good luck. All the best. Bye bye.